Hello everybody, it's Sunday the 5th of December and i um, just going to play some chess. going to play 15 plus 10 and I have the white pieces against an opponent rated 1441 and we have a Sicilian, so I'm going Sicilian wing gambit and I'm of course not using my notes and he's refused so I get to capture inwards towards the centre, out comes his bishop and now d4. So I know I'm playing these first moves pretty quickly, but what I'm trying to do, hopefully, is leave more time to do a new idea, which is called Calculate and Think. Because I've not been doing enough of that quite, in, particularly in critical positions. I've been trying to rush, and that's what Blitz and in 10 Minute Rapid will do to you. They will teach you to rush moves that you don't need to rush. Okay. So now, let's use the gold, uh, the goldfish, the old checklist. That's an undefended thing. So I could even think about bringing my queen out. Of course, my queen's the only defender of this pawn. And then if bishop takes that pawn, lo and behold, it defends that g7 pawn. So that's not a very good idea, is it? So I think knight f3 is a candidate move. Defends this pawn. Also prevents my queen from going out there, but hey... Um, c3 is an idea, but that takes away a natural square from my knight. I've got bishop to here. I've also got bishop to here, which is quite an idea. Quite like that one in this in this uh, opening. I put it on the long diagonal, particularly now his bishop's out. So I'm now double defending this pawn, but should this pawn ever move, haha, g7 looks very tender. Right, now he's blocked off this pawn from being able to advance. It's a decent move. I could take here. He's threatening to take this pawn as well, which is actually undefended. So one idea is push the pawn to e5, which takes away this natural development square from his knight, then maybe put my bishop on a3 and try and prevent him from being able to castle. <clears throat> I need to do something with this pawn because if I do, for example, just absentmindedly develop my knight, d takes e4 and my knight's under threat, so that will not do. So right now we've both developed our dark squared bishops and both of them look a bit stupid. Alright, so now we have a second attacker on this pawn, but we still have two defenders, so I'm not too concerned. So at this point now, knight f3 looks great, adds a third defender, develops, gets me ready for castling. Also bishop b5, develop my light squared bishop, pin the knight, also gets ready for castling. I like the knight move better. I don't really want to invite a kick at this point, although I can just step back. And there's no second kick because his b pawn's blocked. That might be a thought. He can also just play bishop d7 and block. It seems now his knights have to come to a slightly uncomfortable position. So what I'm thinking now is maybe bishop d3. Now this pawn's super defended here. Um, bishop d3 looks like a better way to, to develop the bishop. Because then I'm looking down. See, now what we've got is we've got this blockage in the middle of the board. right? And that makes it hard for bishops to get through. What are you doing? Enormous stuff. Um, I like this move. I might play c3 at some point as well just to complete this. You see, what Black's got now is he's got a problem. He's got all his stuff is on the wrong side of this block here. It's blockade. So now, for example, I've got a knight here as a thought. And if the knight moves, I've even got queen here or queen here. So, knight here, I'm threatening to take on there straight away. Maybe take with the bishop. King has to move, retreat the bishop. Question is, do we want to do that immediately? Or do we want to castle? Now, why would we want to stop it? Why would we want to castle if there's any threat to the king? Well, what kind of threat? So, bishop here? No, just c3. That's fine. Do I want to improve that knight? Don't really see much point in that. Is it time? 
is it the right time to go in here with the knight? So if I do that, what's he going to do? Right? He's almost certainly going to push g6, isn't he? So maybe... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play c3. I'm going to drop my bishop back. Just going to line some more stuff up. Because here's the thing. I can't really see a finish. Can't really see a significant gain from this attack, right? So let's say I play knight there, he pushes that, then what? I've got nothing. What are you doing? This is our third kitten, Ghost. I don't know if she's going to let me pick her up though. Ghost. No, she's not. Okay, so. It's all fun and games at our house now. Got kittens everywhere, climbing on everything, fighting everything. Right. <clears throat> See, now what I'm trying to do is I've got my all my pieces on the right side of the big divide. Yeah. And looking at the correct corner where his king is. Now, this bishop is not going to join in his attack anytime soon. This bishop is useless right now because I've got a dark square pawn chain here in the way. My bishop's going to come to here. My knight could even follow in the footsteps of its friend and come up here and maybe be a defensive knight in two, two moves. And we're only on move nine. Things are starting to take shape. I've even got the idea of throwing pawns up the board now. If I think my king's safe and if I think these pawns will be Decisive. How am I supposed to concentrate? Right, he's moved his knight in the way. Very interesting. Okay, he's afraid. So, <clears throat> bearing in mind what I just said. What about g4? Morris, you're a pain. What did we say? You're a pain. Say hello to the boys and girls. Okay. Now, go and do something that's not in here. Okay, knight here. He could play knight there. Potential trade off. Yeah. I could swap round my bishop and my queen. And then knight there, and he can't move because it's checkmate. That's an idea. That's one idea. Is he actually threatening anything right now? See, I don't think this works, right? I could put my knight there. I kind of like this idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one. Swap these round. Significant threat. Now the queen's in front of the bishop, so the queen's supported by the bishop, so that when the queen captures, she guards both squares. If the bishop is in front, captures, yes, it's checked, but it doesn't guard this square. Ah, okay. Right, more activity. Good, good, good. Huh. He knows he's in trouble now, you see. Now, he wouldn't normally want to play this move. What does that move do? Slightly undefends that, slightly undefends that, but they're both still defended. Uh, if he takes, I've got knight takes. Then if knight takes, I, I don't want to move this pawn. don't want to move that guy there. Got this. Right, I'm going to get rid of these cats. Cats, go ahead. Come on, come on. Come on. That's it. Off you go. Ah. Don't have cats if you want to improve your chest rate, you know. Um, yeah, hitting the, hitting the rook. Does it help? I mean, this bishop's not doing a huge job right now. Its only job is defending c3, which isn't even attacked, so... But having said that, this is also a good idea. Um, but if I allow him to take here, and I take back, and he takes, my only way to recover... to recapture is with this pawn, and I don't want to use that pawn. 
How about if I take out the knight, pawn takes, he ends up with double pawns here, and I've got like an open e-file. If I take out the knight, pawn takes, I castle, and try and use the e-file as my thing of attack, because what, what he's done here is he has weakened that pawn, hasn't he? If I take out the knight that way, if he goes there, I take him out, he puts his queen down, but then that's creating weaknesses. So, I don't know. Take the pawn. Take the pawn kind of solves my problem of, of this guy. So I'm gonna go that way. How is he gonna recapture? He's got three options. Queenie. Queenie, my love. Right. So now, bishop here, bishop here. Definitely improves the bishop. Queen can't go there. He's got three, four attackers on there, but the first defender is a pawn, so whatever he does, he's going to lose a piece. <laughs> I'm thinking now, with there being a semi open file, and with him having this kind of pawn advantage, I think I have to castle. Question is, which way do I want to go? Could I go. No, not that. Could I go long? Could I? No. I might want to use this square for my bishop. I just think there's, there's too much. Okay. My opponent is rated 1441 from Israel, Yam Cohen. So whose position do you like best right now? My opponent on the downside. <coughs> He's got three pawn islands, but then so do I. He has weakened his king by losing his f-pawn. His bishops are poor. Right, that's just improved. So I like his thinking. So he's got one, two, three pieces looking at that square. I only have two. Maybe rook e1 makes sense. Is there an immediate threat against h2? Do I want to make this bishop move now? Stop his queen from going there or there? I think that's sensible. I'm going to do it. So I think his, his defence is paying off <clears throat> to a degree, and in the last few moves he's managed to claw his way back into the game somewhat. This is how chess goes. I also then have the option of this move, which I quite like, really takes some key squares away from that queen. So that queen's now going to have to go onto a light-coloured square. And in fact, she's only got two. And this one pins the knight. And this one... It's not brilliant, is it? So I can't. I kind of like that move. Then I think I might... Now the bishop's moved, I might... Then think about... Ooh, K. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now, if I play this now, Queen actually has that as well. The Queen's got three options. I think it's a no-brainer. I think I'm just going to slip it in straight away. Queen can't go here, because I've got pawn takes. Mm, no, she could. She could. This is starting to get real now. I've also got this, look, this pawn's now undefended. Could come back around. See, my bishop's like, crouch, aim, crouch, you know, strafe. What on earth is strafe? Okay. <clears throat> so, still, his bishops aren't brilliant, are they? This knight isn't brilliant. I mean, 
I need to engage this knight and this rook and my queen into the game. Don't think my queen's moved yet. No, she hasn't. Interesting times, eh? Interesting times. Got a bishop looking at this. My bishop might also come in here and look at this. His queen's under attack, that's the immediate threat. Something else I've started doing in my own kind of monologue is to um, just remind myself what the immediate threat is, either against me or against my opponent. Because sometimes we forget about it, you know? Like, I blundered a rook in that game the other day, because I forgot. <laughs> you know, he moved his knight, my rook was under attack, I started thinking about something else, I moved a pawn instead of getting out of the attack. It happens. Okay, I'm under 8 minutes, he's just under 11. So he's played a bit quicker. This knight can't really move right now. Well, he can. Okay, I just, I just want to improve my stuff. Knight in here, that's nice. Knight here. Attack the bishop. Oh, he's gone there, so he's pinned the knight. Now, do I just have g4? Is he going to do that? I take the knight, attack the queen. Do I? Let's think it through. What's he got? I put my pawn there. Knight's under attack. He pushes. I take the knight. Attack the queen. Queen moves. Queen moves here. Now my knight is under attack by a pawn on here. Oh no, queen can't go there because I've got a pawn on it. Go on, let's try it. This is called attacking the pinned piece. And it all started because I knew that if he put his queen on, C in, on g6, the knight would be pinned. If the knight is pinned, first thing I think is, can I attack the, <coughs> the pinned piece? Pinned piece can't move. It's a sitting target. Sitting duck. And this we expected. <coughs> now, I, oh, if I, no, hang on. If I take the knight, he can go here. Does he win his piece back then, eh? So anywhere else the knight just runs away. See, then the knight's job is to defend that. I haven't got this attacking the queen, because queen just takes bishop. If I take the knight... Hmm. Right, let's get creative then. Right, knight needs to defend that. Okay. See, this is where you have to calculate just a little bit deeper. I take knight, he goes there. I've got pawn here, so if he takes, I can recapture with a queen. No, I can't if his queen's there. Um... I've got attack queen there, but that loses the knight. Same with that. It takes pawn, that just sacks a piece, doesn't achieve anything. I've got to take the knight, I think. I'm expecting this. Which point? Maybe I can move my knight. Now that just drops the bishop. I'm going to stick my bishop down there. He takes with his pawn. Ooh, then this bishop becomes scary. His queen goes here. I drop my bishop back. He takes a knight with his pawn. And there's a serious threat of mate on here, isn't there? I capture with my queen. 
Oh, oh! He took the pawn. That. Now his pawn can't take the knight, because rook takes. What's he thinking? Is he thinking of putting his queen there anyway? What are you thinking? Right, down to five minutes, so. I, thought, I can't move my bishop. Ah! Can't move my bishop. Okay, how about king here? He takes that out with his rook. I can't recapture. Oh dear. I go here. That was a little rash, wasn't it? That whole kind of kicking, tucking the pin piece idea turned out to be... How about this? If he takes the knight, I recapture. Yeah. Takes with rook or pawn, I can just recapture, and then I've got a defender of h2. He can't take that right now, because I can take. If he takes the knight, I recapture. He takes again, queen takes. Queen takes there, blocks or sidesteps. Hmm. This is why we need to calculate one, two moves further. And it's not as though I don't have the ability to do it, I just don't have the work rate. It's just willpower and effort, that's all it is. I have to take, don't I? Well, I do. King's going to dodge here. He's going to come after this pawn, and what do I have? Queen here or queen here? And how do I defend the pawn? Didn't think it through, did I? That. If on pass on, knight takes, defends the pawn. <sighs> yeah? See. F4 blocks the bishop. Then if bishop takes, let's say queen here, F4. I can get my queen to there. Desperate times, but then I've got rook F2. Haven't I? I'd love to get my queen up there. Hmm. This is a 7 9 game for me, so if I lose this, I'm down below 1500 again. He's got that or that with a threat of mate, and I have to do this. So, bishop takes, I've got queen here or rook here. And I've got some defence. This pawn really shouldn't move because it opens up some threats against h7. I like this, I think. This. Um. Okay, material is equal. I'm down, uh, I'm up in exchange but down two pawns. Okay, his knight is bad. I'm down to 4 minutes 25, let's make a move. Queen is defending this, I can also bring my rook, I can also bring this rook across in line with the king. I am not too scared right now. My opponent has pawn structure, three pairs. 
He's got a rook that's not yet in the game. My rooks are quite active. Okay, my queen is the only defender of this knight, so... Um, here, I'm threatening his queen. We trade queens. Seems okay. Queen takes, rook takes, knight's protected. We have an increment on the on the game, remember. I'm not actually threatening this bishop outright. Which is an important bishop because that target pawn, key pawn is, is dark squared, so he needs to save his bishop. If he goes here, no good, I take with the queen. As <coughs> <coughs> here I take with the queen. If he goes here, I take with the knight. Might think about this. Immediate threat, queen takes queen. It's getting interesting. Bang. And it's all over in a flurry of moves. That, my friends, is calculation. Check. Take. Right. Now, stop. My queen is under threat and undefended, i.e. hanging, right? So he has to either move the queen or trade the queen. This is just grabbed at the candy like a baby. Right? And missed this. Anyway, so fascinating game. Let's do a quick review because I know there's a lesson in there. I think the computer's going to say that my attack on the knight with g4 was um, a little rash. Wow. Okay, so at this point here, let's just move ahead to here. Queen g6 is a blunder because... Oh no, it says, you overlooked a better way to win material. No. Okay, then what, what was it? Why? Yeah, G4, blunder. It says black is winning, winning, winning. Minus seven to black. Why this move? Why this move here? And this is the key thing. You've got to answer that question, why? Right? Don't just say, oh, there was a better move. Why that? That's a blunder. D takes his best. Show me. <sighs> and did it just win a pawn that? Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, so that's a blunder. Okay, I get that. We learned that in the game. Because... I simply did, just didn't think it through, right? Maybe this. Yeah, e4. Great move. Great find. Okay. Now, um, I, I, don't, I don't get this one. But I need to understand it. Why, in this position, 
is d take c5 the best move? Well, it's, we're kind of in an equal position. I've just got a pawn. This knight's pinned. He's got two attackers on there. He'll probably win the pawn back. No, I don't see... That it's not that this is a particularly good move. It's that that one's a particularly bad one, right? It was premature. I didn't properly consider e4. And then what would happen? e4, I take queen here. And he's opened up his bishop, you know? So... That's a lesson. I just need to think one, one level deeper. Okay, let's look at a couple of other key moments. Queen e2. And this is a blunder. Gives away free material. But then I blunder. And that's a missed win. Okay. So what should I have done in this position? Surely not capture the bishop, right? Gah, brilliant. If he takes a queen, I'll take his queen. I've won a bishop. <laughs> right. Okay, 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 okay. So, let's break down the pattern. Bishop's attacking my queen. Now, most of us would go, oh no, my queen. Right? But what he's done is, at the same, and this is all there to be read on the board, right? A hobbit lay here. You know? What he's done is he's broken the queen's defence of that. Okay, and if I had noticed that and said it to myself, okay, bishop here, right? Previous move, queen is defending that. I am attacking that. Fair play. Bishop attacks queen, right? Queen's undefended. So most of us would stop there. We'd stop thinking. We'd go, right, that's it, five o'clock, everyone go home. You know? But this, he's, he's broken the queen's defence of that. And if rook takes bishop, pinned. And the queen is undefended. Brilliant. Love it. Now, of course, I didn't do that. I did this, which is a missed win. And black is still winning at this point. But now I think black blunders again. Okay. Now, I was prepared for that one. I said I was going to do that. And that's apparently a mistake because he loses queen, but there you go. Fascinating stuff. I mean, cool. You know, very, very happy to get the win from that. Don't really think I deserved it. I think my opponent played very well, really, really uh, clung on in the middle game after a bad start. But, you know, according to the, the graph, he didn't do too bad. You know, he, he wasn't doing too bad. I had a slight edge, slight edge all the way up into the middle game. Um, but, yeah, we've got to cut out the blunders, you know. It's just, you've got to put a minimum level of thinking into every single move. If not, the sanity check. Right, because blundering your queen at the end like that. Well, the computer says mistake, but blunder in my book, and it's a blunder in his book, because he resigned straight away. But, hey, and, and of course he's looking at this now, you know, queen attacking there. Um, not good, not good. But scrape to win anyway. So that's it. I'm off to referee some under-15 rugby players. And uh, hope that's been fun and useful for you. Hope you picked up one or two things. See you soon.